Today's lecture is on higher order derivatives, and we're really going to focus on uh, the second derivative, but let's talk about a little uh, bit about uh, notation. And so when we had the first derivative, we have two types of notation. We have the prime notation, and we have the D notation. Uh, the prime notation is nice because it's simple to remember. So the first derivative is given by f prime of x. And then a d notation, it's a little bit harder to remember, but it's nice, especially when you deal with functions of uh, several uh, variables, which means you have several inputs. So you might want, want to take the derivative with respect to, let's say, uh, time, or if it's studying money, the derivative with respect to interest, uh, or something else. Uh, so for the first derivative, we have f prime. So you can guess for the second derivative, we'll have f instead of 1 prime, we'll have double prime. So it said f double prime of x. And then for the third derivative, so these higher order derivatives, we write usually triple prime uh, of x. And as we go higher, uh, we stop writing the primes because they get annoying to write. So I'll write something like this would be the fourth derivative of f with respect to x. So we'll write a little four up there. And in general, you know, you have f with a little n up here, so the nth derivative of uh, f, like that. For the d notation, for the second derivative, we write d squared f with respect to x squared. And then, of course, for the third derivative, we'd write a 3 here instead of a 2. And the pattern just keeps going on uh, and on. So for the nth derivative, you'd write d with an n here of f and then dx to the n. Uh, there is a reason why we write the n here and the n there. So let me uh, just explain this real fast. Uh, the derivative is an operator on functions. So when we write uh, this sort of d squared f uh, dx squared, one way to look at this is you're applying the derivative d dx to df dx. This is sort of just for your own personal uh, knowledge. I'm not going to test you on it. Uh, but you can see how then if you take d df, you get d squared f, and then dx dx is dx uh, squared. So that's the idea. We're going to stick mainly with the prime notation for now. So we'll use mostly f prime of x, f double prime of x. Every now and then, I'll probably throw in a df dx, uh, especially when we do something called related rates. So we'll eventually do some applications uh, with uh, derivatives and, uh, oops, not related, related ratios, uh, related rates. And we'll do some problems, some applied problems called related rates problems. And uh, we'll use this sort of D notation uh, more. Okay, so for the second derivative, for, that's basically what we're going to concentrate on. So here's the prime notation for the second derivative. And here's the D notation uh, for the uh, second uh, derivative. Let's take a look at some problems involving uh, graphs. Oh, le let me say one thing real fast. So when I say derivative, hopefully you remember you say what, and hopefully it's you know rate of change. And so the first derivative is the rate of change of the function. So the first derivative is the rate of change uh, of f of x, let's say. And so the second derivative, it's just one more level. So the second derivative, if you think about it, it's equivalent to thinking it at, as the rate of change, not of f, but of f prime of x. So the first derivative, f prime of x, is the rate of change of f, where the second derivative, f double prime of x, is the rate of change of f prime. And you can continue on like this. The third derivative, f triple prime of x, is equivalent to the rate of change of f double prime, and so on and so forth. So each derivative tells you how the function before, in some sense, is changing. All right, so today what we're going to do, I'm going to talk about graphs and derivatives with the second uh, derivative. Uh, so graphs and formulas with the second derivative. So here's our first graph, and what we want to do is we want to sketch graphs of f prime and f double prime. So I'm just going to do this right next to it right here. 
and so here's my x-axis and here's my y-axis. And the idea is to look over on the left side and find first where the derivative is going to be uh, equal to 0, so where there's basically no uh, rate of change on the graph. So let's see, so that's going to happen right here. The rate of change will be 0 there, and the rate of change will be 0 there. So over on my derivative, since the derivative is the rate of change, and the rate of change is 0 here and here, I'm going to put little points here and here to tell myself that's where my derivative is going to go through. And then on the left-hand side here, I have the rate of change is negative because I'm going down. So I'm going to be negative over here. Then I'm going up, so the rate of change is positive. So I'll put a positive up here. And then I'm going down, so the rate of change again is negative. So I'll put a negative over here. And the idea is try to connect these dots as nice as possible. Uh, so I'll use green here. So I'm going to do it just like this. So it's a nice sort of upside down parabola. And this is just sort of a guess at uh, what's going on. Um, and it, it says the right information, right? Over here the derivative is negative, so it's decreasing. Here it's positive, so it's increasing. Here the derivative is negative, so the function is uh, decreasing. Because the derivative is the rate of change. And then when we do f double prime, we simply repeat the process, but instead of looking at f, we can look at f prime. So it's just one more time. Here's my x, here's my y, and I want to graph f double prime of x. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out when f prime of x has zero rate of change. And so that happens right here. Zero rate of change, which means f double prime, which is the rate of change of f prime, is zero right there. And then on the left-hand side, since I'm going up, the rate of change is positive for the derivative for f prime of x. So I'm going to put positive over here. And then over here, I'm going down. So I'll put negative down here. And I think, okay, is there a nice, simple way to connect you know, these three things? And I say, oh, yeah, let's just draw a nice line through them. And so that's f uh, double prime of x. We'll learn later on that uh, f double prime uh, tells us actually about concavity. If you notice right here, I'm concave up. And this is where f double prime is actually positive. And then over here on the original function, I'm concave down. You'll notice this is where f double prime is uh, negative. So we'll learn that if the second derivative is negative, it's concave down, whereas the second derivative is positive, it'll be concave up. So in essence, f prime of x will tell us about increasing and decreasing, whereas f double prime will tell us about concavity. So that's working uh, with graphs and derivatives. And you can keep going on. Uh, just just for fun, if you know this is not this is not on the homework, but if I wanted to do f triple prime of x, it's actually really very simple. So f triple prime uh, of x, because f double prime was a line, and a line has constant slope, and f triple prime is the rate of change of f double prime. If you have constant slope, the rate of change is constant, and so this line's going down. So it's some negative number. I don't know what it is, uh, but I know that f triple prime of x would look like that, where it's some constant uh, negative uh, number. So it's just a horizontal uh, line. And you could even do the fourth derivative of x really simply. So here's x and here's y. Since f triple prime is just a horizontal line, which means it has no slope, the fourth derivative of x no slope, no rate of change, means it's just the horizontal line through 0. Right, this is just equal to 0. And then all the derivatives after that are just equal to uh, 0. This does not happen for all functions, but for a lot of the functions that uh, we deal with, especially polynomials, uh, this will eventually uh, occur. Let's take a look at how we work with formulas and the derivative. And so on this problem, it says use the definition of the derivative to find f prime of x and f double prime of x. So you'll notice if you want to find f double prime of x, you're always going to have to find f prime uh, of x first. So what we're going to do here is we're going to kind of review what we did last time. So to find f prime of x, I'm going to use this definition. So f prime of x is equal to the definition of the derivative says you take the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h. And so now I'm just going to do what it says. So I have the limit 
as h goes to 0. And notice here I want to do f of x plus h. So wherever I have an x, I'm going to put an x plus h. The yellow stuff just gets swapped out. And so on this next part here, I'm going to have divided by and f of x plus h, well, whatever's here, you square it minus 1. So whatever's here, this yellow stuff, I'm going to square it. So I square it. You square the whole thing. Whatever's inside here, you square. And you take away 1. Minus f of x, which is just this whole thing. So I'm going to take away, I'll put parentheses around it, take away x squared minus 1. And this is all divided by h. So that's the first step. And once I get here, I can multiply out the x plus h quantity squared. So I have the limit as h goes to 0 of x squared plus a 2xh plus h squared. Right, so remember, when you multiply this thing out, it's actually x plus h times x plus h. And this is where you're going to get this x squared for the first term, this times this, and this times that, plus an xh. And then this times this, and this times that, so plus hx. And finally, plus h squared which is then x squared plus 2xh's plus h squared, and then you're going to have minus 1, so minus 1, and then minus an x squared, and minus, oops, a minus a minus is going to be a plus 1, all divided by h. So now things should cancel. So what's going to cancel? We have the x squareds canceling because we have plus and minus, and then the 1's cancel, minus plus, and so we're going to get this to be equal to the limit, as h goes to 0 of 2xh plus h squared all over h. Now we did some algebra here, so you might think we're done. We just plug in h equals 0, and we should get our answer. But if you plug in h equals 0, you get 0 on the bottom. And the top, you're also going to get 0 because you have an h and h squared here. So you have the 0 over 0, which is indeterminate form, which simply means there's more work to be done. So we continue on. And if you notice, what we can do here is they have an h in common, so we can factor out that h. And if you do that, so you factor out the h, so you play this game, okay? So what goes here times this gives me that, and that's a 2x. So 2x times h is 2xh. And then what times here times h gives me h squared, and that, of course, is an h. And this is all divided by h. So when you factor out that h, you can see that you the h's in top and bottom will cancel, and that's when that indeterminate form, that 0 over 0, actually goes away. So now I have this equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of 2x plus h. And now I can plug in 0 for h, so 2x plus 0, and I get my answer of 2x. So the derivative of my function f of x is uh, 2x. Right, so I can just put a box around my answer if you want. Right here I can write f prime of x is equal to 2x. And really the only reason I'm doing this is because I'm about to use it to find f double prime of x. So for f double prime of x, it's basically the same definition. So f double prime of x is going to be equal to the limit as h goes to 0. But instead of f of x plus h, you'll have f prime of x plus h minus f prime of x all over h. Now there's several reasons for this. I mean, the simplest is really what is f double prime of x? It's the rate of change of f prime of x. So you can use the same definition for f prime of x. You just put wherever you see an f, you put f prime. And so this is going to be equal to, we have the limit as h goes to 0. And we have this vinculum here. And we have h on the bottom. And this one's always easy, the minus 2x. It's always what goes here that causes trouble. So let's think about this again. I want to find f prime of x plus h. So here's my x plus h. And here's my rule, f prime of x is equal to whatever's inside here. Take two times what's inside there. So basically, you just replace the yellow stuff. So whatever's here is 2 times what's in here, so it's 2 times what's right there. So on this line, inside this green, I'll do 2 times x plus h. And of course, minus 2x, because that's my derivative. Once you get that, you basically have it done. It's just a little algebra, so 
h goes to 0. I have 2x plus 2h, so multiply through by the 2, minus the 2x, all divided by h, which is equal to, and of course the 2x's are going to cancel, because I have plus 2x and minus 2x. And so this is equal to the limit, as h goes to 0, of 2h over h. Oh, and then the h's are going to cancel. That's that indeterminate form, that 0 over 0, basically going away. So h goes to 0 of 2, and I plug in h equals 0. Now, of course, there's no place to plug in h equals 0, so you just get back the number 2. And so f double prime of x is equal to 2. So you can write it down here if you want, or you can just leave it boxed. I usually just leave it boxed, but just to be clear, I know my second derivative uh, is equal to 2. And just for fun, since I have some time here, if you wanted to do f triple prime of x, you should be able to generalize this definition now. h goes to 0. But instead of f prime of x, you'll put f double prime of x plus h minus f double prime of x, all divided by h. And this one's actually really easy because if you plug x plus h in for x, you just have 2. So you're going to get the limit as h goes to 0 of 2 minus f double prime of x is still just 2 all divided by h which is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of 2 minus 2 which is 0 over h which obviously is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of 0 0 divided by any number and notice h is actually a number uh, when we're at the limit doesn't care what happens at 0 it happens what's around it so at this point h is not ever actually able to be equal to 0. It's just some number a little bit bigger than 0 or some number a little bit less than 0. That's sort of the idea. And so this is the limit as h goes to 0 of 0, which is the nice number of 0. So f triple prime of x is equal to 0. And all derivatives that follow for this function are equal to 0. OK, so hopefully uh, this makes uh, some sense to you guys. So higher order derivatives, once you have one derivative, of course, you can find a second, the third, uh, the sort of notation we use. Uh, keep the denotation in the back of your mind, uh, but we're going to focus mostly on the prime notation. And basically, we're focusing on the second derivative at this point in time, um, so the notation f double prime uh, of x. How do we find the second derivative using graphs and formulas? Refer to those. Uh, examples.